All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about option statements, which actually change the behavior of Visual Basic a little bit. Um, the reason why they're important is because we can actually use them to make things a little bit safer and help preserve uh, some of our data. So I'm going to show you some really helpful option statements that you should be using in order to honestly make your life as a Visual Basic programmer a lot easier. And in this video, we're going to be talking about F3.8, which covers, well, option statements. Like I said, option statements change Visual Basic's behavior. You can specify some options that change some of the rules by which Visual Basic handles some of your code. You actually place these option statements above the public class clause in the code editor. So right at the very top, you put your option statements so that Visual Basic knows right away how it should uh, handle your code, the rules that it should be following when it's actually trying to compile your code and all that. The first option is option explicit on. When you type that, it tells Visual Basic that you must explicitly declare your variables before you use them. If you don't tell Visual Basic option explicit on, or if you say option explicit off, um, Visual Basic might try to infer like, oh, well, I haven't seen this variable before, so I'm going to create a new variable with this name and assign it new memory and all that. And if it does that, that can be a little bit tricky. Uh, suppose that you didn't actually want to create a new variable, you accidentally mistyped the name of a variable uh, in an assignment statement. Then the variable that you're actually trying to use no longer has the correct value because the value that you tried to put into it went into a new variable with a similar name, but it's misspelled. And that might be a little bit of a mess to try to solve. So you should always use option explicit on at the top of your programs. Another one is option infer off. Uh, what this says is that every variable must be declared with a data type. If you don't specify this, or if you say infer on or something like that, uh, Visual Basic might try to guess what the type of the variable is based on the type of data that you're trying to put in there. It might try to infer that type, but that can be a little bit tricky. Um, it is pretty good practice to actually specify what types your variables have and to stick to that type because then you know exactly the type of data that's going into it. And if you accidentally try to pass in the wrong data, the wrong type of data or something like that, you get that warning or that error or whatever. And then you can look and actually see, oh, so is something actually going wrong? Or do I need to be aware of the fact that I'm trying to change the type of the value that's going into the variable or something like that? It gives you more control over everything and more control is good because you want to make sure you know exactly what's going on with your program. So this is another great option to always include. It will help make you a better programmer if you include option infer off and you always declare your variable's data type and you always put the right type of data inside of your variable. Now there's a process called implicit type conversion, which essentially says if a value's data type does not match the memory location's data type, the values type is converted to match. For example, um, if you try to declare a double variable, you know, double length, and set it equal to an integer, Visual Basic will convert that integer to a double, in this case, the double 9.0 instead of the integer 9. So there are times where implicit type conversion is totally fine. Uh, for example, when you promote uh, certain values. You convert them to a data type that can store larger or more precise numbers. For example, if I converted an integer to a decimal or double, or if I converted a decimal to a double, since doubles can hold way more values than an actual decimal, um, that's a fine promotion to do. However, uh, demotion is an example of when implicit type conversion can start to cause problems. You uh, convert a value to a data type that can store fewer or less precise numbers. You convert it to a narrower data type. 
Uh, so if I went from a double to a decimal or integer, or if I went from a decimal to an integer, uh, that can be tricky. So especially converting these to an integer is really bad because um, say 78.4 would get converted to 78. You lose that 0.4 at the end of the number. You actually lose information there. There's also some weirdness when you try to convert a double that is larger than the maximum possible value for a decimal into a decimal or one of those really large doubles into an integer you start to lose information things get kind of weird so demotion is problematic so that's where the third option we'll talk about is uh, comes in option strict on which says strict type conversion rules uh all that implicit type conversion stuff there's a lot more stuff that's going on uh, Visual Basic supports a lot more implicit type conversion, but a lot of it can be problematic, which is why option strict on gives us the ex uh, the choice to use stricter type conversion rules. And those strict rules are actually really beneficial for you as a programmer. So for example, um, strings will not be implicitly converted to numbers. This is a really good rule because um, if it, that implicit conversion is happening, possibly without your knowledge, you might not realize that you no longer have a string anymore, or you might not realize that you might be uh, trying to convert an invalid string to a number, and then that value becomes zero, and you've lost everything that's in that string. Maybe that string contained a message to the user or something like that, and you accidentally converted it into the number zero with that implicit type conversion. So option strict on disallows that and instead forces us to use the try parse methods, which are a lot safer because we know for sure that we're trying to convert that string to a number and we're expecting it to possibly come out to be zero if that string is invalid. So because we're expecting it to happen, that's why it's good. That's why it's safe. The second rule is numbers will not be implicitly converted to strings sort of a similar idea the other way around. Um, if we accidentally convert a number to a string, then we can't do math on it anymore or anything like that, although it might have to convert back into a number and that might start getting weird because it might choose the wrong type to convert into and all that kind of stuff. It might get a little bit freaky. Uh, for, uh, also, we're not able to specify formats like that if we do implicit type conversion. So, the solution is, you know, disallow that and use the toString method that we talked about uh, previously. Rule three says that wider data types will not be implicitly demoted to narrower data types. In other words, no demotion whatsoever. Demotion is not okay because we might lose data. So instead of uh, trying to store a double inside of a decimal and have that implicit conversion happen, instead we have to use the um, literal type character in order to say, hey, this is a decimal, not a double, and we're making sure that that 0 0.05 is actually a decimal for when we're putting it into the decimal variable. So that's another really good thing because when we do that, we know for sure that we're putting a decimal in there. And we also know that anytime we don't have that uppercase D, that literal character, we know for sure that that's a double. So it's really helpful. And then narrow, narrower data types will actually be implicitly promoted to wider data types. So promotion is totally fine. If we are doing division between a double and an integer, uh, what Visual Basic will choose to do is convert that integer into a double. And then we have a double divided by a double. And the same for any mathematical operation is if, the, um, if there are different types of numbers in the same mathematical operation, they will all be promoted to the type that is the widest or you know can handle the most amount of numbers. So if you have a decimal and an integer, uh, it'll get promoted up to a decimal. If a double is involved at all, any non-double will become a double. So that is actually a good thing. We want that to happen so that the um, the mathematical operators can do the correct action for doubles instead of having to like try to do the correct 
uh, operation for integers that might be a little bit different than doubles and might not work out for doubles and all that kind of stuff. So promotion is great. So that's option statements. Those three option statements that I gave, you should always be including at the top of your application files, you know, above the public class uh, statement in your code. Including those in will impose some restrictions on you. You won't be able to do as much, but you'll be a better programmer for it and your code will be a lot safer. You won't have to worry nearly as much. So it's a really good idea for you to specify those three option statements in your code every time you make an application.